Hello everyone everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom with the Faith video minute for today, which is May 13th. Today I want to read for you from 1 John chapter 5. 1 John is written to let give to let's put it like this. 1 John was written so that John was communicating to the churches and to the believers that they are sons and daughters of God, and that they can have that faith that God dwells in them. God himself dwells in them through Christ Jesus. Jesus was created in the image of God. We are created in the image of Jesus when we are born again. Therefore, we are created in the image of God. We have God himself dwelling in our hearts. We have the triune being of God in us. These flesh and blood bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. That's where God dwelt physically, you know, dwelt with uh, the Hebrews and the Jews. That tabernacle was where God dwelt with man. We are now tabernacles of the same Spirit, the same God. But instead of having one place, that tent of meeting or that temple, where everybody had to go to, to worship and pray. We possess the same Spirit of God on the inside of us. We are children, begot of God. We are children of the Most High, Almighty, All-Powerful God Himself. Hallelujah. And John is trying to communicate that to let the believers know you are children of God. Now, in chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, and I could read the whole book. I mean, 1 John is just awesome. But 1 John chapter 5, whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah is born of God. And everyone that loves him, that begots, loves him, also is begotten of him. If you have love dwelling on the inside of you, that you are children of God. Amen? Down in verse 4, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. There's nothing at all that can trip you up or take you down. Praise the Lord. Well, Brother Bob, that's just not true. We know adversity comes and people fall on hard times. Yes, they do, but keep reading. Whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. What overcomes the world? Our faith. Read the next verse. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So your faith in Jesus that he is the Son of God is enough to overcome everything the devil throws at you, everything the world system throws at you. Amen? Let's jump on over to verse 13. These things I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, which is Jesus, that you may know. What is it you may know? That Jesus is the Son of God, that you believe that, that you may know that you now have eternal life. Praise the Lord. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, it's all centering around Jesus. That's what he's drawn everybody back to. You believe Jesus is the Son of God, you're born again. If you're born again, your, your faith in Jesus will overcome the world. If you're born again and remember that you are a son of God, you have eternal life because you believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we can have in him. Praise the Lord. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. When you know that you know that you know Jesus is the Son of God, when you know that, when you know that you know Jesus is the Son of God, you have God dwelling in you. And we can have that confidence 
that we are children of the Most High God just like Jesus is. He is the ultimate King of Kings. I take no glory from him. But we are created in his image. Praise the Lord. And elsewhere it says that we are seated with him right now in heavenly places. As he is now, so are we. Praise the Lord. Therefore, we know that Jesus has his prayers answered by God, and therefore we can have the same confidence that if we know him, our prayers are answered by God. Our petitions, if we know he hears us, we know that we receive that wait for, not later in eternal life, as some people preach, but we receive now the petitions that we desired of him. Doesn't say he answers every one of our prayers. It does not say name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it. It says we receive the petitions. You know what a petition is? If someone is upset with a law that is passed, we have a right in the United States of America to create a petition. And if we can get enough people to sign the petition, then the authorities must put it to a vote of the people, whatever the law or policy or whatever it is that has been established that has upset some people. If enough people sign a petition, then it goes to a referendum and a vote at the next election. And then if enough people vote against whatever current law is in place, that law is done. At least that's the way it's supposed to happen. Many jurisdictions that are very liberal and they call themselves progressive, they're ready regressive. They tend to create their own laws through judges who are not a legal authority. The judges are interpreters of the law. The executive branch are the enforcers of the law. The legislative branch is the ones who create the laws. That's the way the separation of powers are supposed to work and enough people don't like a law that has been passed by the legislatures, they can have a petition. And that petition authorizes them to put the vote to the people. And if enough people vote against that law, that law is cast off the books. Praise the Lord. They receive, <clears throat> they receive the petition that they had presented for the authorities. They receive the answer to it. We have the same right, but you must work it in as a petition. A petition is not, we want to change this law. Change it to what? What about the law don't you like? What do you want to do? We want to throw it out. We want to cast it off. We want to throw it down, disavow it, make it of no effect. Why? You know, a lawyer, when he goes into a case, how would you feel if you were up for a murder trial, knowing that you didn't commit it? And your lawyer, every time you call the lawyer to talk to him, he says, no, 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 I don't need to know all that. I, I know the law. I'll come in and I'll talk to the judge and the jury at the day of trial. You'd feel very uncomfortable doing that. And then, you know, the trial starts at 9, and here your lawyer shows up at 8.55. And he's got, you know, two, three briefcases, and just puts them all down, says, okay, we're ready to go. And... The trial begins, and he gets up and says, Your Honor, my client did not do the crime. Defense rests. How would you feel about that? That's how many people present their prayers and petitions to God. Say, God, I need X amount of money for my car payment this month. I believe I receive it. Okay. Are you going to receive it? Probably not. There are cases where God says, okay, here you go. Not very often. Not enough where you can rest upon that method of operation. To present a petition before God means you research his word. And you write down every instance where you see someone receiving their need being met. You, you research the word. You find where God's word promises that whoever comes to him in faith will receive from him. And then you present those scripture verses and stand every point of petition that you make must be referenced by the word of God, telling 
not, you're not telling God his word. He knows his word. What you're showing him is that you know his word and that you're standing on it by faith, that this need is great, and you're presenting your petition before the ultimate authority in the universe for all things have been given to him, Jesus. He's king over it all. And you're presenting these points of his word, his promises to him. Say, Lord, based upon this petition that I present to you, I'm releasing my faith. I believe I receive the things I've asked for. Now is where your faith kicks in because it says, uh, if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have. We take, we possess the petitions, the answer to our prayer that we have asked of him. Praise the Lord. When you pray your prayers to God, don't go, oh God, I need this, and I need that, and I need this other thing too. Don't forget about that. Your prayers get no higher than the ceiling. But when you go and research, like a lawyer would present his case in court, these are the reasons my client does this needs this, requests this, based upon established petitions, established points of the word of God, we now request our client be granted his petition. You're going to get it. Praise God, you're going to get it. Some people, some denominations, some pastors say, well, no, you won't. <clears throat> you just nullified every petition you presented before God. Sometimes God is sovereign and he'll do it. Yes, he is. And sometimes God is so sovereign that he stands on his word. Well, you're just picking piecemeal. <clears throat> does it say it in the word of God? Well, you're, does it say it in the word of God? Yes or no? How can you not say It's piecemeal when you quote John 3, 16. Whosoever, that's a big whosoever. Whosoever believes on the name of the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God, that, Je that God raised Jesus from the dead, whosoever believes that shall be saved. Are you going to quote the entire book of John? Or are you just going to believe John 3.16? Well, it goes a lot deeper than that. You're talking about two different things. Does the word of God say it? Yes or no. What are you going to believe? God's word or your word? I pick God. Because when you stand with God, you realize that you are blessed in all that you do.